Alrighty, so we have not started the glue up yet, but what I did want to do is I wanted to do a dry fit. Basically just put the rocker box together, put the mirror box inside, make sure that I have the adequate spacing because, you know, even after doing a lot of these telescopes, you could still easily make a measuring error and not realize it until you have put hours and hours more work in than necessary. So I always like to do these dry fits and make sure everything's going to work out. So as you can see, I've fitted the, dry, the rocker box, put the mirror box inside. We want to see, do we have a gap on the side? We do. So here is about mm, just under an eighth of an inch. And same on this side, just under eighth of an inch. And of course, we'll make sure that we still have it on both sides there. So there is just under an eighth of an inch. And oh, I'll tilt it back this way. And as you can see, I've got that all the way down. So everything's going to work up right. The, uh, the joints look really, really good. They're not glue fitted yet, of course. They'll get a little tighter whenever they're glue fitted. But everything fit really, really well. And pretty excited to get this glue up going. And then after that, we will uh, probably go ahead and move on to the mirror cell. Wow, we're really coming right along. Okay, on to the glue up. So again, I have my pieces. I went ahead and sanded them down lightly with like 120 grit. Um, that's much easier to get the corners and everything before you have it all glued together. So I lightly sand down. Keep in mind, if you're going to run over the uh, fingers themselves, be really careful not to put much force down whenever you're sanding because we want a nice even glue up. So what I have here laid out is I have it open like a book. All the glue is going to go on the insides of the joints. Then again, I've got my clamp rack right here behind me. And what I did to uh, prep is I made all the clamps the correct length because we only have so much time whenever we apply that glue. And I've got my water, a rag to clean up with. And then of course I've got my Type Bond 3 for uh, the longer open time. And I've got my mallet. So I'm ready to start gluing. So let's get it on. I'll start up front. slightly larger mallet. Okay, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to take your water, clean up any squeeze out that we have so far. And that's it. Make sure you're square which I just did a second ago. In fact, that's why I was using the really large mallet. I was holding one side and I was hitting this side pretty hard with the bigger mallet in order to knock it square. So now I'll just go back and slightly put more pressure on each clamp. And again, I'm probably gonna leave this in there for, oh, at least eight hours. That's how long I'll let this glue dry up, so. That's it. So next, let's think. I kept threatening to go right to the mirror cell. I think what we're gonna do next is make the uh, cover for the top of the mirror box. Okay, back to work we go. So I said that we were going to skip on and we were almost finished with the rocker box. That wasn't quite true. Um, I still need to flush cut those finger joints that were proud. I did that without making a video. Just refer back to the mirror box video on flush cutting those finger joints if you need any type of input on that. What I'm going to film here is I'm going to go ahead and take that 764 drill bit. I'm going to go down through these fingers about 
two inches. I'm going to pin it with just a simple nail. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to cut a bottom board for the rocker box. Just a simple sheet of a three quarter inch plywood. I use three quarter on any scope, 18 inches and smaller, and then one inch, 20 inches and larger. Um, one and a half inch on the 27 inch. Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes. Now that we've got the holes drilled, just have these pins. Stick those right down in there. Remember again, they don't need to cinch in there. They're actually just serving as that mechanical pin. So I've got them to where they just slide in. Then I'm going to take a hammer and a set. Go ahead and tap them on down so they're just below flush. That's it. Next, we're going to cut that board for the uh, bottom here, and we'll glue, clamp, and screw it. And then we'll have to put a hole in it. So, a uh, couple more videos to go before the rocker box is finished. Okay, so now we want to drill out the half inch hole that we're going to use as the central pivot point for the azimuth motion of the telescope. So, we want it dead center of the rocker box. And it's really, really important that it stays perfectly vertical. We don't want it slanting either way because that would cause binding. It'll cause that rocker box to be tilted over one way as it's going over the ground board and it can cause uneven motion, kind of jerky motions. And if you add encoders in the future, you're gonna have other problems. So rather than just use my simple two tri-square, two speed square, method of staying straight, I'm going to first mark my line to the dead center of the rocker box, and then I've got one of these drill guides that you can get. My drill press isn't quite deep enough to do these bigger rocker boxes, so these drill guides are pretty handy. Get these at like one of the big box uh, home stores, Home Depot or Lowe's, but uh, they work pretty well. You still want to make sure that this is at a perfect 90, that the, the spade bit or the Forstner bit that you're using coming out is at 92 the base, um, so that's the only measurement you really need to worry about there. So first we're going to use a long straight edge. I'm gonna go from corner to corner. Making a giant X. Ooh, actually it's a little off. Don't wanna be off here. Okay, now we're perfect. So where my lines intersect is my dead center. So now I want to take that spade bit, since I haven't punched it or anything, spade bits are pretty handy because they have to point. I'm going to start by just... There we go. Now I'm going to push this down. Now I'm going to go nice and slow because what's going to happen is the point of that spade bit is going to protrude to the other side, at which point I'm going to flip the rocker box over and go the other side through to finish the hole up. That keeps me from getting any tear out. Make sure that it has popped through, and it has. So since I run the risk of going all the way through, you might throw some scrap down um, underneath your work surface or do what I'll do here. Just take a couple pieces of scrap and this will prop it up off my work surface so I don't damage the table any more than it's already been damaged. And here we'll turn this rocker box so maybe you can see the action as it were. Now 
we show them in school. There is a perfectly vertical, clean hole. No tear out, and it's dead center. And so, like I said, we will, uh, I'll finish up by rounding over the edges and the bottoms of the rocker box, and then we have to apply the Formica. But uh, after that, it's on to uh, other things. So next video, I believe, we'll do the uh, Formica application. Thank <laughs> you.